Hello Stoke fans and welcome to the first ever Stoke Fan TV. Now a little thing just before we start the show, this was filmed on the Monday just gone before the Leeds game and we had every intention to bring it here before that game kicked off. However, during edit we ran into some, let's say, PC issues. So if you're wondering why we're talking as if the Leeds game hasn't happened, that's because it hadn't. And one other thing, if you want to leave a comment on the video, go for it. But please be respectful to all those involved with the show. If you want to like and subscribe, don't forget to do that too. Enjoy your first ever Stoke Fan TV. Wanting to be long lost brother from <laughs> Australia. God, he speaks perfect bloody pottery. Yeah, one nil up. Oh, John Howie's running oh, down the wing. I was buzzing, man. Oh, I was mate, buzzing. He, I was oh, running, what a goal. I was running round. <laughs> mental, you know what I mean? Were you expecting that result today? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, he's, he's like, yeah. I think we've all got to believe and we can do it. How do you reckon we get on today? Murray game, go on. What's your prediction? 2 1. 2 1. 17 now. <laughs> on the Reds! I came from Hamburg, Germany just to see this just game. To see and I knew they will win. Because, because you're it. Yeah, <laughs> tough game, hopefully. Uh, one of our strikers will score and we'll sneak it 1 0. That'd be ideal, wouldn't it, really? That would be ideal yeah. for us to score. <laughs> right, yeah, that would be one. What do you think? What do you think? Me? Oh, I'm there for the optimist. I think we might draw. I can't just see to it. I'm just open the door. Whoa! This is our home. This is our club. This means everything to us. It's down to the players. The players need to start playing. Yeah. But not taking the mark. Yes, yeah, the club have invested in these players, and these players just need to step up, step up, and show the fans that they Stoke City through and through. If you're as old as me, 50, 57 years old, 58 this year, we've always been crap. Haven't we? We've had a few, we've had a few good seasons. I've managed Sunday League for 15 years. Saturday night, you got like 15 players going to turn up. Then on a Sunday morning, you got nine men. <laughs> I, 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 I had play in the PDSL at 51 years of age, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, he hasn't got that problem, has yeah, he? Yeah, worry. He hasn't got to wake him up in the morning, you know? Drive, him up, drive around the house, get him up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's what I did. Thank God I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Johnny Walters, he's back. Ooth, he's back. Stoke the back. This guy's going to lead us to three points. Pints. Job done. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the first ever Stoke Fan TV. Now you're probably wondering who the hell we are. Well, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Max. Yeah, I'm Sam. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing you as much content as possible on this channel, all about Stoke City Football Club. We're going to be talking about form. We're going to be talking about results. We're going to be talking about players. We're going to be talking yeah. about managers, hopefully one for the foreseeable. Let's, yeah, you know, so. touch wood. Uh, what else are we going to be talking about? Yeah, we'll be talking about what people have to say about how we've played and what needs to change if things need to change and basically just getting information from the fans, getting your points across and letting the fans have somewhere to voice their opinions. I think that's important. Now, We've got our studio all set up. This is the first of, you know, hopefully many. So we're going to be playing around with a little bit of the structure of the show. If you get bored at all, you know, skip on through to a bit where you find vaguely interesting. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and involve the fans as much as possible. Now, we've already sent out some questions. I don't know if you saw, we did a little promo video where... Sam came out with this this camera and did some slow motion footage. I put my football boots on and kicked a football for the first time in a while. And um, surprised I didn't crock myself. And in that video, we asked you three questions, didn't we? Yeah, what, so what were the three questions? The first question we asked is, are Stoke going to avoid a drop this season? <laughs> it's a depressing subject, isn't it? Yeah, it's such a, it is a depressing question. But it's the question before, well, maybe before the last game, which we went to go and yeah. watch, it was really on everyone's mind. Yeah. So that was question one. Uh, question two. The second question was, what would you do if you were the Stoke City manager for the rest of the season? Yeah. Like players, tactics, formations, etc. Yeah, because, you know, we're, we're, I think we've all got our thoughts about yeah. what we should do. Uh, and the third question on a bit more of a positive note was, um, you know, who's been your standout player? Uh, from the season. Now, what we did is obviously we put that out onto the Facebook page um, and we asked on them and we said, send us your responses to our email. But we also got quite a few responses to our Facebook page yes. messenger. We even got a couple of video messages and we also got uh, a voice recording as well. So thank you to those people who sent those responses. But first, 
I think we need to play some of the yes. clips from Saturday, the interviews yeah. that we did on Saturday at the Borough game, didn't yes. we? Yes. Um, where we obviously we obviously picked up a crucial win. So without further ado, I think let's just play those responses. The art says yes. The art says no. I think, I think we're too big a club to go down, to be fair. Though we've said that before. Like I say, if we can pull four, four points out of the bag over the next two games minimum, Preston away following week, maybe a draw away, that's five points, and then we're out of it, aren't we? Yeah. And then it's a case of the best, te- the, best team go- or the best team stays up, the worst team goes down, because you're going to have, what, about six, seven or eight teams all fighting for that uh, position to get out of the relegation spot. Yes, we are. Um, I believe that uh, we'll get together as a team. We need to play as a team. Um, cut down the silly mistakes at the back and uh, uh, you don't concede, you get a point. Uh, not sure, I think a lot of us are not sure, uh, but we'll just hope we can. I think we'll just avoid, That's what we like to hear. only because the teams around us are just as bad. Yeah, well, that's that way. What so. do you think, Mugger? Uh, same as him. Yes. That's what we like to hear. Why is that then? Because I think there's three teams worse than us. Well, that's... I really do yeah. think there's three teams worse than us. And I think we're going to pick up some... Strange results. Thoughts, you know, be ideal, we'll we'll go away to Leeds and stuff three points. Oh, well, 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 you, you never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we will. Yeah. Yeah, easily. So, uh, why do you think that? Walters. I think he knows what it's like. But he's still playing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think he'll have that effect on the players. I mean, and show them what they need to do on the pitch and what it means to represent Stoke. Yeah. Yourself. I think we've got too much class on the pitch to go down, and the players we've got just need to start working together. Because, but I feel like if we go down, it'll. We'll be stuck down there for years and years. Well, I've always thought we will avoid the relegation. We've got a young manager. We've got to give him time. Um, you know, it's not his team. He's trying to motivate him. It's difficult. Not enough goals in the team, as we all know. But I think we should stick with this manager. And uh, if he takes us down, takes us down. and brings us back up with his own team. It's as simple as that. And I personally think now we've got Johnny Walters. We'll be well set. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. There's a new confidence now. John's there. Yeah. Right? And John has got the capabilities to turn it round. You're not the first person to tell me today that Super Johnny Walters coming back in is going to make a difference. Mate, it's lifted it. And you think today we've got Robert Hooth in the ground, we've got Whelan in the ground, got we've the got boys. Ryan in the ground. So you we've know, got some old it's school there, haven't we? I hope they've all brought the bloody boots with them. Yeah, me too, to be fair. I'll never be up front at this rate. <laughs> go, go to the wire. Tough question. Go to Tough, the question. Tough question. They've got, to, they've got to pull the socks up. Yeah, absolutely. They've got, you know, they've got to stop. Putting the ball in the net, Create, we're creating a lot of chances, but we're not putting the ball in the net. You know, so you reckon? Exactly what he says. Yeah. Um, just got to stay positive, yeah. and hopefully we yeah. get a free point. Super there. Johnny Walker's coming in. Do you reckon he's going to make a difference for the remainder of the season? Um, yeah. Certainly yeah. going yeah. down the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think that's a good move. You yeah. know, if he yeah. instills a bit of the spirit he had when he was a player, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe someone should give him a pair of boots, I think, to well, prepare yeah, that bag of fuel. Do you reckon yeah. we've got what it takes now he's come in? It's not the too good. Yeah. It's not the too good. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. It's got to, it's got to start playing. It's got to happen. That's it. Yeah. Do, you, do you reckon we're going to avoid the drop this year? Stoke yeah, City. Stoke City fans. Stoke City fans. We've got a massive fighting chance. If we win today, we're 1 0 up. If we get that three points on the board, which is massive because it says this is a six pointer. No Absolutely. matter what, Every game you know, now. we're in the relegation zone. We can fight our way out of the relegation zone today. And, oh man, everyone, please get behind the team. Get behind the Sing boys. Sing it all yeah. for the lads. Yeah, I th- yeah, yeah, you yeah. reckon? I think, yeah, got the players, got the manager, hopefully. It's positive feeling around. Keep this performance up, guarantee you stay guarantee. up. I certainly hope so, I've been here too long. <laughs> so, yeah. I certainly hope so. I wish we hadn't got Leeds next game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, we we'll win the next game. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah? yeah, definitely. You're confident. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Leeds next game. What do you reckon to that? Leeds, Leeds. You reckon you take a draw, would you? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah I'll take one. a nil-nil draw. Take a nil-nil, nil-nil draw. Yeah. We'll go into that. Two-two yeah, and then Preston and Finkers game after yeah. that. So we'll win that one. I got hope. Yeah, I see yeah. we're gonna do. You've still, you've got to have yeah. hope, haven't you? Yes. But yeah. I don't know. I think- I think there's a lot of potential. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very yeah. positive. Yeah. yeah, so that was everyone's response. The first question from before the Middlesbrough game the other day. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, it was a well, mega responses. Thanks to everybody who was involved on the day. Thanks to everyone who we came up to and pestered with our uh, microphone and, and, and gave us uh, their responses. That's, as I said, 
as Sam points out, that's just before the Middlesbrough game. A lot yeah. of positivity there. Yeah, loads of which positivity. Which is mega, which is brilliant, which is what we need. Loads of positivity, but I think the question that people have got is why are we in this situation with the players that we've got? Because we've got a lot of players mm -hmm. on the pitch that yeah. are technically better than what they are playing as. Another thing that was uh, quite interesting about that video, uh, people mentioning having Super Johnny Walters back involved yes. in the club. He's going to make a big difference, isn't he? Yeah, the fans love him. I think it's pretty obvious to tell from the videos that we got from before the game on Saturday that the fans have, have had a massive boost since John Walters has... He asked, he asked for a wall of noise, yes. didn't he? And for anyone who was at the game, there was a wall of noise. It was loud. That first 10, 15 minutes. That's the loudest I've seen that stadium when, for a while. When that first goal went in as well, it erupted. It was brilliant. It, that's the best atmosphere I've seen there. I think Jono's celebrations kicked yeah. it off a bit. I yeah, think, yeah. I think the passion that the players are showing when they score is great, to be yeah. fair, and it's kicking the fans up a bit. It is, absolutely. We've also had some responses from people on Facebook and we've also had on a couple of emails. Right, so we're going to read those out now. Stephen Hollins emailed in, said, uh, I think we will stay up, but by the skin of our teeth, things are looking bleak due to teams below us picking up points last weekend. Uh, but this is Stoke we're talking about. Never a team to do things the easy way. <laughs> I'd agree <laughs> with that. I've got a feeling a win and a draw next two games. Well, the feeling's good so far. Uh, got what's, uh, I've got one here from Jack Whitehurst, who's got in touch via our page. I believe we can. Uh, there has been points where we can gain some real momentum and move forward. But census changes to the team and setup have been the issue. And we've got one more that's come in on the Facebook comments from Les Holmshaw saying but he reckons that we'll stay up on the last day of the season. Stay up on the last day of the season, we'll go with that. Cameron Mills as well. Uh, yes, uh, we have to believe we can. Uh, and Callum Bowyer, League One next season. Ooh. Ooh, so that's the that's the first one. But everyone's entitled to their opinion. And you won't be alone uh, in thinking that, Callum. I'm sure there's some people out there who are thinking that. Another interesting comment from Carl uh, on the Stoke Fan TV page. Uh, we need a more consistent side if we're going to stay up. Well, that was mentioned a lot in the videos from the game. I think a couple of people said that we need to stay consistent and keep a core of a certain amount of players that are suitable players to stay in the team, such as Juno and Berger and... We're going to talk. We, we're literally, in a second, we're going to show you the clips um, yeah. from the formation. But before we do, we've had a couple of video messages, haven't yes. we? My first answer for the first lesson, I'll stop going to forward version this season. Uh, my answer to that is, I think we might be forward version, version this season, but I'm not sure still. From what it seems like, it, it, it's on the nav, nav yeah, to me, I think if we can get about three or four wins in the next 11 or 14 games, then we might be just because be, Safe, so because I've always been optimistic, sort of thing. I think we, we might not. We think we might just slip out, but just about good for fun, so so. But I think about, I would say, 15th, 14th, so that. Hello, Stoke Fan TV, it's Pones here. And yes, you got your three questions, I'm here to answer them. So, your first one Are Stoke going down this season? Yes, <laughs> unfortunately. I'm looking at our games in hand. I'm not seeing a lot of points based on our current form. I hope I'm wrong because I've not seen us personally. I've not seen Stoke go any lower than the championship and it would be gutting to see us go that low. But I think it might happen. And like I say, I hope I'm wrong. So there you go. A couple of responses that we've had in via video. One from Adam and the other from Pones. Now, a quick mention to Pones. If you haven't checked him out on YouTube, do go give him a follow on YouTube and subscribe to his channel. Uh, two kind of contrasting thoughts yes. there, isn't there? Pones is saying, unfortunately not. Maybe Pones, maybe you jinxed it, sending us that before the last game. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe a little bit of magic jinx in there and it will bring it back round. Um, but it is a, a very real possibility. Thanks for your thoughts. And also there we've got Adam, haven't we? He's Who's trying coming? to stay quite optimistic. And he's it? trying to stay positive. And, it, you know, he's saying in, in his clip there, he wants to stay optimistic, but he's saying he thinks it'd be on a knife edge. Yeah, he, he reckons if we get... Three or four games, we get three or four wins before the end of the season. He reckons it will just about stay up. That's yeah. the sort of vibe I'm getting from his, from his message. Yeah, so there you go. So there's some video messages sent in to us. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us via commenting on our post, sending us an email to sftv at danceviremedia.com. Or you can even 
uh, get in touch with a voice recording. Now, this voice recording is from a good mate of mine who happens to be the biggest Nathan Heaney fan in the world. <laughs> and this is coming from Danny Fleming. All right, guys, you all right? For uh, sending my answer to your questions regarding the first one, it's a reality now. People always say that, you know, 10 games ago, oh, we're not going down, we're not going down, and you just take it with a pinch of salt. But now it is a reality. We've got 12 games left. We've got Middlesbrough next, and then we've got Leeds. They're on absolute fire. There you go. We're going to get the rest of Danny's thoughts in a minute. Um, but it, yeah, there is this, obviously, reality that we are in amongst it, yeah. um, for sure. Obviously, that was sent before the Borough game. Danny, what do you reckon? Change your mind since then, maybe. But Get in he, touch. He has got a good point about Leeds. Leeds are the next game coming up. They have been playing well. They drew with um, they drew with Huddersfield, didn't they, on the weekend? Yeah. They'll be all. looking. They'll be looking to bounce back from that. But still, a great win against the a great win against the Borough. So, what are your thoughts on all those thoughts from the Stokies? Ping us a comment below. Let us know what you think. Uh, that's the first question. That's the the biggest question on everyone's minds. Are we going to avoid relegation? Yes, definitely. So, right. question two. Well, question two. Now, question two. Obviously, I think there's a bit of a link between question one and question two yeah. because, you know, to avoid relegation. What do we have to do? Yeah. If you were the manager, this is what we asked, isn't it? If you were the manager of Stoke City Football Club, what would you season. do for the rest of the season? I just think you've got to keep it basic. 4-4-2, four, 4-3-3. Four, four, three, three. I think, especially at home, we need, we need two forwards. We, you have one forward, he's, he's isolated. I think we two up front, four, four across the midfield, four at the back, just keep it tight, do the basics, correct, and we've got a chance. Well, we've had this on this sort of conversation in the car, and I think we've got two obvious weak links in defence: McAnelly and uh, Rose. Shocking, although they have been They're probably good footballers, but not for Stoke City. Uh, Stevens comes back, and obviously we need a left back, a, a left back. And you know, the manager argued the toss that we haven't got a left back because they're either injured or they're right backs. But then we've got perfectly good players in the under 21s who are left backs. Give them a chance, get them in. Four at the back, two in midfield, two up front, two floating down the wings. Vidigal on one side, let's have Gooch on the other. And, you know, so you're 4-4-2 four, four, or you're 4-2-4. Four, four, and you've got the option depending on who you're playing against. I'd like to think that uh, we've got to play three at the back. We've got to play five in midfield and two up front. Uh, we can't just play uh, a player like Nathan Lowe up front on his own. He's a young lad at the end of the day. He's not physically enough to play in this league as yet. So uh, we need two players playing off each other at the front, a strong midfield and a back three that we can rely on. Who would you have at those top two? Yes, I'd have Ennis and uh, I'd also have Vidigal. Vidigal because there, yeah. he's, uh, he, he's quite, uh, what can I say, he, he's off the cuff. Yep. He, he isn't straightforward, he can do something special. And if he only does that once a match, it's a goal. I'd try and go 4-3-3. Yeah. Although we seem to be persisting with the, somebody up front on the road. I think we've got to start at the back and, and then build from there. Yep. Get a solid defence. So, yeah, solid defence. And then hopefully win a couple of games. I'd have two, two up front. Lillian on the right. Uh, Gina on the left. Berger and Baker. Gooch right back. Thompson left back. I definitely think of two up front. I think right. Ennis has got uh, far better than Tyrese Campbell, far too lazy. He's had his time at Stoke. He's had more than enough opportunities. Let's not forget, Jacob Brown's got as many goals this season yeah. as, uh, as Tyrese yeah. Campbell. Well, there you go. And so he's going to be playing. Piece. But I think we need, we need someone up front with him, alongside him. Is Wesley the answer, possibly? To you stick low up front them? with him? Or do you I think they're both too similar kind needs, of players? Yeah, you just need someone to take, take them big, big, burly defenders. Like Ennis at, at Cardiff. I thought he, you know, he, he gave 100% for them two big centre halves. He had no hope against him. So I'll play 4-2-3-1, Chamadu, McNally, Rose, and then probably Stevens, Berger, Baker, and then Jono, Vidigal, Ennis, and that Manu. Manu, that's yeah, he's a good player. I think he's, he looks alright. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll stay how he's done today. I think this team that he's put out today. Especially the midfield should be what it's like every game. Yeah. Promising signs from the lineup. That's why everyone's confident the lineup looks good. Well, I always like to see two strikers up front. Yeah. And particularly the Leicester game and another game, Cat for memory now, we only played one striker up front. So we've got two up front today, possibly three. So I think we should always do that. So maybe get an extra person up top. What, Ennis and Lowe, you reckon? 
Yes, possibly. A bit unsure about low at the moment, but any is you know he's, yeah. his quality. Yeah. Um, that Ryan May may come back in the team. He seems to have sorted himself out with the club now, and uh, he he might just give us the boost we need. Try and stop conceding goals at the minute. Yeah, that's a, a big you know, and uh, try and get some bloody goals in the side because we we we've got none. Try and keep this out of side. Would you play two up top? Or would you yeah, stick with that one up front? I'd, I'd play two I, up I think two, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd absolutely. Got Nathan Lowe up there with an Up there with Ennis, right? maybe. You, you guys, obviously, you, look, you sound to me like you know your team. Yeah. You know, who would you play in the next game? Would you keep the t- team the same? What would you do if you're a manager? I'd, keep, I'd definitely keep Kundal yeah. off. Keep Kundal out, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep the team the same. Keep, keep the team, team the same. same. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same, same as that. Yeah. I think today's team was brilliant. I think um, I, I wouldn't make any changes. I would have no. No. As it is, please. Yeah. As Keep it, it going. Keep it going. You know what? Look, I remember. I re- I've been going since 1972. I remember Lou McCauley saying, "It's not about tactics. It's not about formations. It's about 11 versus 11. And if those 11 out there can can get out, do the best, do the job, how it's supposed to be, we will beat anybody down here because yes. that's what we've always done. Yes. This is what we've always done." We've humbled the biggest clubs down here. And you know what? It doesn't matter about formations. It doesn't matter about whatever. It matters about those 11 who put that shirt on. Where do their pride mean as much to us as, as it means to them? Get out there. And you know what? We This club can can climb mountains. We can do it. It doesn't matter who we play. It doesn't matter your formation. Let's get out there and we'll do it. Go on, stay. I think we just need to stick to a start in 11 from the first half every game because he's been swapping and changing it about and then obviously he's got substitutions he can he can change it a bit there but we need to play in a way that the players are used to their positions and they can play in the style and play comfortably to give them a bit of confidence until we get clear of the bottom three then we can go back to trying these methods of play we just need to do anything at the moment or even just go old school route one we just need to get out this bloody bottom three and the main focus is, regardless, even if the football is bloody shocking to watch, it doesn't matter. We've just got to do what we did back in the day and just do it. So, for the rest of the season, what I will give you, I've got it on the computer. Um, but if that is, it would be... So, if that is, what would be, be my thing, I'll, I'll, I'll go for the key as my, my, my main information. Obviously, because uh, it's all bits that are fit. My second formation would have been is 4 v v and my third formation is 4 g v on But if if it be in about 80 minutes and we are using about all my two goals down, then I'll go give uh, 4 g four formation instead. And if I was Stoke manager for the rest of the season, I'd personally be sticking to having these six players in the squad, Bonham, Gooch, Chamadou, Juno, Berger and Ennis. Gooch and Chamadou, amazing full-backs, just been un- unlucky with their form recently. Juno, been our best player this season by far, just like I say, he's got his first goal on the weekend, which is amazing. But personally, he needs to start every game with Berger as well. And uh, yeah, same with Ennis, since he's come in from Blackburn, he looks really energetic and he's even got a, a goal for us as well. So yeah, I'd have all three, all six of them in the squad every single match day, and obviously rotate who you need to, to in terms of who we play. Especially if we've got three games midweek left of the season now, so obviously rotate and manage their fitness. So some some really good answers there, and some very passionate answers uh, from the fans as well, which is which is brilliant. Some quite intelligent see. answers as well. Absolutely. Some, yeah. Some of the fans I think could make quite well football managers. Ah, I think they do all right. You know. Well, let's hope there's not yeah. a job going at Stoke yeah, straight let's away. Hope. Let's hope he manages to turn this around. And we've also got some uh, messages that came in to us via our email and via our Facebook page. Let's quickly just go through them and then we can discuss it all as a whole. I've had an email in from Stephen Holland saying if I was a manager, my team would be Bonham, Junior, Rose, McNally, Thompson, Laurent, Baker, Berger, Million, Juno and low. There you go. You can see it all on screen there. If you want to have a good read, it goes really into depth yeah. with it, doesn't it? Thank you for that response, Stephen. Much appreciated. Jack White has a second question on the Facebook page. Unfortunately, we have another flock of players who have been lumbered 
uh, with who don't want to play for the club, but alongside this, we have players like Campbell who don't want to buckle down and get involved because there's going to be no contract in the season. Keep Juno Berger and Junior, unfortunately injured. Now a core nucleus of the team. We've chopped and changed our defence massively. And honestly, it should have been sorted in the winter. Another response from Carl on Stoke Fan TV page. Probably put Bonham back in goal and Stevens back at left back. Mm -hmm. Callum Bowie has put, won't know where to start. What I do know is that Steven Schumacher is the right manager for the job and the players are the issue. Les Helmshaw, uh, on the other hand, says uh, Schumacher is out of his depth uh, at Plymouth. He took over as the club were on a positive roll, not ready for a club in our mess at the moment. Well, don't forget as well, this was before uh, the Borough game. So maybe uh, let's change your mind a little bit since then. I know that having Johnny Walt with Buckingham team, that'll give yeah. a big boost. And if you have changed your mind, get in touch and we'll put your new thoughts on the show. Absolutely. We've had another message in from Anthony Martin. Find the best 11. Don't keep chopping and changing. Get the defensive side right first. Well, can't argue with that, to be honest with you. Uh, Cameron Mills, play two up top. 4-4-2, Ryan May slash Campbell and Ennis would work well as a two and gives us more going forward on the pitch. Do you know what? This whole two up front thing, a lot of the clips in there, yeah. um, we've spoken about this, haven't we? We beat Middlesbrough 2-0 and we had one up front, but it was an attacking one up front with the two wingers that were cutting in and playing as quite attacking wingers. So I'd see it more as a three up front in that game than a one up front. Do you think that if we think in the middle of the pitch, you've got three, effectively three central midfielders, one yeah. as a cam maybe. Um, it seemed to me in the last game that Berger, Baker, sitting back a bit, yeah. Laurent attacking. Do you think maybe would you get rid of Laurent in that kind of position, move him on and maybe have another striker up front, maybe well, sitting I, off I the think front one? Personally, but Le, I think Laurent's more of a defensive player than an attacking player. So mm. I'd have Laurent as more of an anchor in the central defensive midfielder position and I'd have Baker as the one going forward, as that number 10 getting in the positions on the outside of the box. As we saw, he shot from outside the box and he scored. Yes. He's got a good shot on him. He's nice a nice deflection. Yeah, it was, it was a nice, def nice it was, deflection. It was a nice deflection. We need that but, slice of look sometimes. Yeah, we'll take that. So there you go. There are your thoughts. Um, there are your thoughts from us. You don't want to hear us waffling on all day. Um, and thoughts from other fans as well. What do you think? Ping, uh, ping a message in the comments below. Let us know. Right, moving on. Question the third three. and final question. Do you know, we, when we started, we thought we'll only be on uh, screen for 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll just do a quick short video. This is turning into a little bit longer. We can't promise the video will be this long every week. Right, anyway, moving on. Final question is, who has been your standout player of the season? We'll do it back to front this time. We'll start with some of the messages that we've had on Facebook and then we'll go over to uh, the video messages. So a couple of messages here. First one, Callum Bowyer, uh, Berger and Baker. Yep, I've got a message in from Jack Whitehurst. Walter Berger, quite simply our captain and leader throughout these darker days as a Stoke fan. Juno, Junior and the return of Baker have all brought a passion to the players. He does go on to mention her about Josh Laurent and he does say that he showed some fight today screaming into the camera, this is a Middlesbrough game. But he goes on to say that he's 30 games too late mm. and every other game he's lazy and incompetent. Mm. Certainly not a leader if I want going, I'd want going into any form of a relegation scrap. Well, what do you think to that? Pop it, pop, let us know in the comments. Let us know. Les Helmshaw, Berger and Juno, Vidigal at first, but once it got cold, he's lost it. You know, yeah. you can't, he can't do it on a cold wet night in Stoke. It's not Portugal for him. Cameron Mills. Berger has been the only one who looks bothered or has tried throughout the season. Laurent would be second only for his injuries and being in that squad. You know, it's all down to what you think. It's whether you think it's a front that the players are putting on or if it's the players actually having that passion. Because I think if Laurent, with that passion that he showed in the camera at the end of that Middlesbrough game, if he can show that passion on the pitch for 90 minutes of the game, then mm. it will increase his game and make him a much better player. It's all good coming up to the camera and screaming and shouting that you've won a game. Yeah. But you've got to win a game in the first place. Um, Ant Martin has been in touch. Uh, he says, um, Walter Berger by Mar, proper leader. Uh, it's been tough. Um, fan negativity hasn't helped. If you've been a Stoke fan as long as me, it's like being on a roller coaster ride. If you don't like a roller coaster ride, don't be a Stoke fan. Uh, Masterclass bringing John Walters in. Uh, connect with the fans and the team. So there's another, that obviously going off a bit from favourite uh, player, but still, thank you for your response there. Have we got anything from anybody else? No, shall we go and have a look at the videos that we got from the ground and videos that have been sent in? Yes, that sounds like a bloody good idea. 
that's an our question. Like, you go Travis, to it. Did you go Travis, to it? wasn't it? <laughs> you go to it. Just Wait, I think it was Travis the day you went back to Bournemouth. No, uh, <laughs> I think it's got to be uh, Walter Berger. I, I mean, think he, so. he, he, do, he does stand out uh, more than most. Apart from that, I think the, the South Korean lad, uh, John, John, I think yeah. he's done all right. But apart from that, nobody really. No one really standing no. out for you. Yeah, see. well, I'm with Martin on that. I think Berger... He's a good captain, really. When he has been captain, he's a good player. He puts himself about the pitch, runs all over the park. He's a, he's a bit of a lightweight if he takes a knock and he has to come off, don't he, after 70, 80 minutes. But to be fair, he puts the shift in. Standout is uh, Berger. Um, he started off well at Stoke. He scored within two minutes, as you know. And uh, he's, he's now captain. He's leading the team. He puts 110 in and uh, hopefully... Um, yeah, that's all I can say. He's the standout by far. Um, I like Wilmot. I think he puts 110% in. Um, and also, uh, well, the, the rest do their best. Yeah. But they are standouts. I would say the uh, lad is just coming from Korea. Because I think he's John very Ho. promising. Very yeah. promising. Yeah. He's a nippy little lad, isn't he? He's got a few tricks up his sleeve. He'll get better. He'll get better. Bijan Ho. Bijan Ho, I'll go with that one. Ho or Birger. Both of them. Ooh, Berger. Yeah. Berger, I think we've got to steal there, and I really hope you invest around him. Berger. 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 You've got burgers in your head. Keeps burger. making, everyone keeps I'm saying Berger. Yeah, I'll yeah. get out of hand in a minute. Get myself one. Berger. Berger, Berger. Berger without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. 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 Berger. Berger. Juno second. Juno second. Yeah. Berger. Juno, yeah. He's been the best fresh air, really. Berger. Juno. Baker, Juno, Juno especially. What a game today. Berger's playing well as well. Oh, yeah, so Berger, I'm sorry, I forgot Berger. You forgot Berger. Uh, How can you forget Berger? So right. good on a beer. <laughs> John Ho. John Ho. John Berger. Berger. John Ho. John Ho. What about you, Dad? What's your What's your favourite? I'd say John Ho after today, actually. If, yeah. you, if that's going to keep us up, I'd say John Ho. John Ho yeah. to keep us up. Do you know, do you Juno. know, you are amazing. <laughs> and I, I saw you signing there, all the, everybody's fans, know. you know, all the, 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 all the, the yeah, he's been. You were amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so far this season, I'm going to say two. It's going to be both our midfielders. Uh, the first half of the season, I'm going to go without a burger. He's come in um, and he's slotted straight in the side, especially from Basel. Done amazingly there and come straight into Stoke and slotted right in. Like I say, we're unfortunate with the results we've been getting um, in the second half of the season, but he has been a key player for me. And the uh, second half of the season, Bay Jun Ho. I said at the start of the season he wasn't ready for the championship. He had needed a lot more experience. And he's, there'll be more game time he had under Alex Neal and even now under Schumacher. He's blossomed into an amazing, amazing player. Both of those players, if we do go down, I don't think we'll be at Stoke next season. I reckon they'll have Premier League or top flight offers from other, from other clubs in other countries because those two players are outstanding and we're lucky to have them. As to be, I think the first half of the season, on the Finn Gal, that's the first half of the season. He, he, he was very, very good. And then in the second half of the season, for me, was um, Burger. What was the Burger? Because uh, to me, he's going to be very good as well. So that's my two base. On the Finn Gal, and what the Burger? Player wise, I'd say Burger, because he just seems to have that bit of an oomph where he's playing for the shirt a bit and all that. And obviously, there's a few passes going missing, but. I wouldn't say he's a top player on at the moment. The only saving grace is that we've had Walters come in, haven't we? So I believe this week, from what I've seen on the uh, socials, he's pulled them all in for a good bloody chatting to. And hopefully they've took on board what he's said, as he knows the ethos and the principles and what Stoke City are all about, because he was there when we were, you know, the always the underdog, always the underdog. So... Who knows? Maybe we're quite against Middlesbrough. It might stick, it might not. Ronald Satley. Good stuck. There we are. Some excellent responses. Thank you to all who participated in that, sending us in your video messages, your voice messages. Thanks to those who we pestered for your responses at the game. Really, really good answers there. Yeah, absolutely brilliant answers. I think it was pretty obvious as well who everyone chose as a standout player. Do you reckon? Do you reckon? Is it making you want to go and get a burger? I think we're going to have to have well, some well, burgers. Well, yeah, next, next, uh, next video, which is a pile of burgers uh, on the table. We didn't actually bump into him. Uh, yes, we Right did. after the game, when we went round to chat to some of the fans next to the shop, he was coming round and we stuck a microphone in front of him. Sam started hit record and uh, I did a terrible, terrible job of asking him questions because all I could think about was Walter Berger, Walter Berger, Walter Berger. Uh, so well, I tried my best. I asked two questions. And the first one I did mention, actually, 
that a lot of people have been saying that he was uh, their kind of player of the season. And he was very modest in his response. Well, this is what he had to say. Great result today. Uh, the game itself, how do you think it played out? I think we realised what we had to do today to win and that we realised what was the most important three points to get it over the line, a few good goals. A lot of people saying you're their player of the season this season. I think you've had a brilliant season so far. Yeah. Great result today. How do you think, you reckon Stoke are going to do enough to stay up now? I think uh, it's not important who's going to be the player of the season. You just need to stay up. Well, what an answer that is. You know, he's not interested in who is going to be player of yeah. the season. He just wants to keep the club up and that has to be the message amongst the players surely now. And that's the sort of attitude we need from all of the players. Absolutely. Who's been your player of the season? Berger. Berger. Yeah. Berger, yeah. Berger, Berger for me. And John Ho as well. He's come he's, he's come up good after yeah. Christmas. Well yeah, he's he's what I, what I liked about John Ho is you've seen the development throughout yeah. the season, haven't you? And he's and he's persevered. And he's gonna get better. So when he first came to it? Stoke at the start of the season, he looked a little bit, a little bit weak in comparison to probably the championship players that you get now. But that goal he scored against Middlesbrough the other day, where he took on two people and outstrengthened them and got past them, slotted in bottom left hand corner, he yeah. can't fault that. That's mega. the sort of play we need in the team. Absolutely mega. Just a couple of bits to finish on. A couple of bits of content that we really wanted to show you. Uh, the first one is about an event that's coming up where you can play on Stoke City football pitch. Check it out. On the tw on May, 25th May, of May. 25th, 25th of May, of May this year, <laughs> we are playing on play on the pitch of Stoke. We oh hired, my, we do it for we, charity. We do it for charity. We, we bought, we, we've hired each for the day at two o'clock. We got the pitch for two hours. Uh, spectators and players who want to play, contact AJB decorating contractors. It is, it is available to play on the pitch. Yep. It's £65 per person yep. to play on the pitch. You pay 65 quid, of the 65 pound you paid, you get a full kit. You have to play for home all the way. Where do, we, where do people find out about it? Where, do they, where, where is their website? The website, well, also say is contact AJB Decorating Contractors on 0770 My name's Andy. Speak to me. I'll put you down. Me and will put you down in the book. Yep. You can play on the pitch, not a problem. Any money, we're paying for the pitch. We're paying for the the, spon the, the strips. We have to spot and anything our sponsors. We go to Mind, yep. which I think Mind at the present moment is a big thing. No yep. matter if you're a Vale fan, Stoke fan, Crew fan, Mind is a massive, massive big thing. So there you go, Stokies. Uh, there's a, a good opportunity, isn't it, to play on the pitch? Uh, all the details I think were in that video, uh, weren't they? You never know. You might end up getting a contract. Uh, you never know. You might be up top. One of the two up top. We've been talking about. Um, next one. Now this is a really interesting story. Now I think this interview. When this chap was telling it to me, I think this encapsulates yeah. Stoke City fans to a T. Yeah. This is about a guy who came to watch a Stoke game as a Cardiff fan, and then his coat caught fire, and now he's a Stoke fan. Anyway, check it out. Outside the ground now, obviously, we just won. Okay, tell me that story you told me just back in there about uh, what happened to you when you come down to right, the game. So, basically, in uh, December 2021, Cardiff were playing... Uh, Stoke here, and I'm a season ticket holder at Cardiff, so I'm in the Stoke end. And uh, when Cardiff like equalised to make it, uh, I think it was uh, three three at the time. One of the Cardiff fans threw a flare, and it landed on my coat, and my coat's on fire. And I'm like putting my like uh, flare out and that. So then I walk all the way, get on the Stoke bus. I'm sitting there quietly because I must be the only Cardiff fan on the Stoke bus going back to the Stoke City Centre. And then just before we're getting off the bus, uh, what the guy, Andy, who I found out his name is Andy, sitting next to me and he said, why are you not talking now? Why is there a hole in your coat? And he said, you must be a Cardiff fan. Yeah, I said, I'm a bluebird. I said, uh, we were lucky to get a draw. So he said, come in the Glebe and meet all the rest of the cheese boarders. And I was like, no, I'm not going in there. I might get beaten up. So eventually go into the pub, meet them all, and don't think anything of it. And then the following December, 2022, come in here again in the Cardiff end, watching uh, Cardiff play Stoke, and come out with my friend. We walk up the road, and then all I hear is the about 10 guys going, hey, Lee, Lee, Lee. What are you doing here? How are you? And I turn around, it's the same guys I met 12 months ago. 
So I give them, went to the cheese, went to the Glebe again, give them my number, and then from January 2023, every time I came to watch Stoke, Stoke won. The first game was in January when they beat Red in 4 0. And then I built up a friendship. I've still got a Cardiff City season ticket uh, as well. So in December, in uh, 2023, all these boys went, right, we're clubbed together and we'll all get you a season ticket at Stoke. So I came here with their money, went to the <laughs> ticket office in my Cardiff City tracksuit that I had on, went there and they're all like, you want a season ticket, but you're wearing a Cardiff City tracksuit. And I undid and my now. zip yeah. and, I, and I went, I got a Stoke top underneath yeah. and got a ticket, like half season season ticket. And basically, stoked through and through. Now, obviously, Cardiff's my first team, and I really wanted to draw last week. But what I'd like to say is, about the Stoke people, it's not about the football, because the football is terrible at the moment, it's about the crack. And I'm Stokies, I thought, like, a really, really, like, not acceptable, like, people, but what, They've like taken me in. I think I've known them for the, like the last ten years, my friend. There it's mad. Go. And now next season I'll get a full season ticket, and I'll have a season ticket well, of Cardiff. More still. importantly, is every time you come, they, they win. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Isn't and it? I and I did say today that uh, Stoke would win. <laughs> there, you there you go. That's that says it all. Then that that, that, that's all. mint. I well, love that story. Stokies. Mega story. Well done, Stokies. That's a brilliant. That's a brilliant yeah. story. Um, Finally, um, when we were walking around the ground, we didn't necessarily think we were going to bump into a poet, a Stoke City poet. And we poet. didn't even know it. And we didn't even know it. So, okay, <laughs> right, finishing <laughs> off, to finish off with our terrible humour, Ian Dyer is his name, and we interviewed him, and he told us about one of his events coming up. So to finish off the first ever Stoke Fan TV, before we go... Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Facebook page. Facebook page. We'll be on Instagram Give us a and TikTok soon. Give us all your flack from what a terrible show it is. In the comments below, though, so it builds our YouTube channel up. So there you go. From me. And me. And him as well. That's it from the first ever Stoke Fan TV. Enjoy a bit of Ian Dyer poetry. Something completely different now. Tell us a little bit about this. What's cracking? Right, well, uh, there's a firm called Affordable Heroes. Yeah, and um, we've we've done three gigs so far. We did uh, Mickey Thomas, um, Lou Macari, George Berry, and now we've got like the most recent player, Liam Lawrence. And if they, if you went to watch them at Stoke City, it'd be fifty pound a ticket, and you get pie and peas. Well, who wants to spend forty quid on pie and peas? When you can go and watch your heroes for a tenner. There you go. Affordable heroes. Mega. Are you going to uh, give us a little taster of it for the YouTube channel? Would okay, you, yeah. Would, would, you, would you be Are you ready? Right? Are you ready? Okay, go on in. I'm just one single man in a large group of many. So awesome, so mighty. Not a lot of us own a penny. One common cause to us unite is when we're called to show our might. You've never seen a finer sight. This street is even with red or white. But please, the innocent, don't take fright. The bad amongst us would take delight. We're decent men, or well, most of us, and we tour the country by train and by bus. For the white, when you glimpse us, please don't frown. We're just Stoke City and today we're in your town. Hey, Ian Dyer, ladies and gentlemen, Stoke Fan TV.